Okay. All right. Um, good morning and welcome everyone to BC213. Uh, let's uh, pray and get started. Could somebody please pray? Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, let's pick up from where we paused last week in um, our journey through the end times. We are trying to get a sequence, uh, understanding of the sequence of events. And um, so we talked about a uh, pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Okay. And now we are going to start looking at the seven years of tribulation. So we said the rapture of the church will happen before the tribulation. Believers will be in heaven. Uh, we said what will happen in heaven. Then we answered some questions on that. Now we're going to say, okay, what is going to happen during the seven years on earth? All right. For this, um, what what I want, what I just want to establish is about the seven years. If you go with me to Daniel chapter nine, um, and uh, here the angel Gabriel is uh, speaking to Daniel. And it gives him um, an understanding of this seven-year period, all right, which is referred to as Daniel's 70th week. So we will be looking at Daniel chapter, uh, Dan, the book of Daniel in detail next year, and we study all of the prophetic texts in Daniel. Um, but I want to just, I want us to just know, see here about the seven-year period, right? So Daniel chapter 9, verses 23 to 27. Daniel 9, 23 to 27. Could one, somebody read it for us, please? Daniel chapter 9, verse 23 to 27. At the beginning of your supplications, the command went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the translation, to make an end of sins, to make the reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah. The prince, there shall be seven weeks and seven, sixty-two weeks. The king shall be gained the king, and the world even in troublesome times. And after the sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be covered, but not not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood, and till that end. Of the world, this desolations are determined. Then he uh, shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate even until the cons uh, cons cons consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. Okay. So we said here that the angel Gabriel came to Daniel, and in verse 24, he says, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. That means he's saying, I've come to talk to you about 70 weeks. So keep the number, 70. One week represents a period of seven years. Okay, uh, we will uh, 
we will prove that, uh, and I've given you, uh, I mean, in, in the notes, I've, sh I've uh, shown that, that a week, which is seven days, is equal to seven years. Okay, you can see that, for example, in Genesis 29, verses 27 and 28, in the notes you'll see that in Bible times, seven days were used to represent seven years. So, for example, Laban told Jacob, you work for me for seven days. And I will give you, Rachel, only seven days. What he meant was seven years. Like, so seven days is used to represent seven years. Right? So in Bible time. So this 70 weeks really is 70 times seven, which is 490 years. Okay. So then he says from the command, verse 25, from the command to rebuild Jerusalem, until Messiah the Prince, there will be six, 7 plus 62 weeks. 7 plus 62 is 69. 69 weeks. That is 69 times 7 is 483 years. Okay. So, from, and this is historically proved that from the time King Cyrus said, go back, told the Jewish people to go back and rebuild Jerusalem, till Jesus came, Historically, they say, oh, about 500 some years, 500 some years. But according to what the prophecy is, it will be 483 years. The reason no, nobody knows it correctly, because all we, we are reconstructing, right? We don't know exactly which year uh, King Cyrus said, go back, you know? We know roughly about 500 years, 450 years before Jesus this happened, right? So there was no accurate calendar. So roughly they say, but according to what Gabriel told Daniel, it is seven plus 62, which is 69 weeks. 69 times seven is 483 years. So 483 years out of the 490 years is already over. How many years are left? Seven years, seven years. Seven years are left. And then Gabriel tells Daniel, this seven years is reserved for the end. Okay, so in between, from till the Messiah is cut off, till the seven years start. What is it? It's the church age. From the time Jesus died, till the beginning of the tribulation, the last seven years is the church age. You understand? So once the church is raptured, the church is taken out of the way, then the last seven years begin. And what happens in this last seven years? Look at verse 27. He says, then he, that is referring to the Antichrist, he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wings of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. So he's saying he will confirm a covenant, which is a peace treaty, for one week. One week is seven years. So now he's talk, talking about the last seven years. And he's talking about this man who will, who will you know, um, suddenly uh, he will have this one covenant of one week and then he will stop sacrifice and offering. Now, in the previous chapters, which we will study, right? In chapter seven, eight, and seven and eight, uh, Daniel has had visions already about this man, and he has already had information that this man, this Antichrist, will uh, stop the sacrifices. So this is a repeat of what is already given in chapters seven and eight. Okay, we are not looking at it, so the background, uh, you know, in the, it, you may not have it right now, but we will look at it next year. But but the point I want to make is. Daniel 9.27, which is referred to as Daniel's 70th week. Daniel's 70th week. What is this? It is the last seven years, which has not been fulfilled. The first 483 years has already been fulfilled. From the time the Jews went back to rebuild Jerusalem till Jesus was crucified. That was already fulfilled. That has happened. So last seven years is left. 
and he tells us in the middle of the week in the middle of the seven years that is three and a half years he will break his covenant and he will stop the worship that's happening he will bring an end to sacrifice and offering the offering that's going on in the temple he'll stop it okay so this has already been given to us in old testament scripture right and not just once many times uh, we will see in chapter 7 and 8 that many times it's it's mentioned that there will be this times time times and half a time that is one year plus two plus half that is three and a half years it you know is mentioned many times uh, several times in the book of daniel okay so it is with respect to these seven years that we now go to the book of revelation let's go to revelation the book of revelation what we are going to do is we're just going to go through an overview of the book of Revelation. That means we're not going to read every verse, but I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, I'm just going to give you a summary of these chapters. Um, and then next year, we will go through, we'll read verse by verse and go through it. Okay. Now, when you read the book of Revelation, our approach is that this book has been written chronologically. That means we stay with how God has given this book, right? We don't chop here and chop there and mix it, match and throw around. No, no, no. Just stay with how God has given it. How John has written it, stay with it. Only understand that there are certain portions, and I will show you, well, point it out. For instance, in Revelation 12, uh, there's a portion that looks back at the time when Satan fell from heaven and then there is a portion there are portions in the book of revelation which are parenthetical that means there is no judgment being poured out but it's like almost a pause there's silence in heaven or something like that but otherwise it is a sequence of events that are happening one after the other almost like you're watching example i'm saying you're watching a movie and it's a story from start to finish but sometimes in the middle of the story they may say hey remember this happened there flashback right this happened there sometimes they will say it'll show or it might say it might for one person it'll take just his life start to finish and you know give you that so we have that for example the two witnesses they are only mentioned in Revelation chapter 11. But the information given in Revelation chapter 11 about these two witnesses is what they will do for three and a half years. That means what they will do for the entirety of the second half. But it's only given in one place in chapter 11. For three and a half years, so this many days, they will be doing this. You're with me, right? So it's mentioned, but it says it'll cover this whole duration of time. So you have both flashback and you also have foresight. Like this is the <laughs> this is the full journey. I'm telling you here itself. This is what they will do for three and a half years. Finished. Okay. Other than that, it is just a chronological sequence of events which we will follow. So um, if we yeah, Revelation chapter one, what God is telling uh so John, in chapter 1, John at this time is sent into exile. So John is very elderly. Uh, you know, we don't exactly how old, but maybe around 80 years old or something. And this, is, this book is written around AD 90. That means it's towards the end of the first century, around AD 90. Or some, sometimes AD 96 or 93 uh, 95 something huh? AD. AD, first hundred AD 90 hmm? so that means in the first century so um, John is has been banished to the island of Patmos he's the last living apostle of Jesus and it's one of the 12 right of course we know there are there were other apostles like Paul and so on, but not the same kind as the 12. 
right? John is the last one alive. He's been sent to the island of Patmos. And there he has this vision. So the Lord Jesus gives him this vision, which he writes. And the Lord tells him to write. And uh, I'll just point. Um, uh, 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 so. So, hmm. so I want to um, write these things. Um, so, uh, Revelation 1, verse 10, John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice. So, uh, he's in the Spirit, and he is caught up into heaven, and he hears, you know, the, the Lord speaking to him. And then he says in verse 11, What you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. Right? So he's saying, write these things, send it to the seven churches. And then verse 19, Revelation 1. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. So he's saying, write what you have seen and the things which are, that means there are things that are happening right now, and the things which will take place. Okay, so what you have seen, he's seen the vision of the Lord. Things which are, that means this is what is happening with these seven churches. And things which will take place, that means... After the seven churches, I'm going to tell you what the future is like. All right. So, in chapter one, it is John's vision of the Lord. Chapters two and three, it is the vision of uh, the Lord is telling him, this is what is happening with the seven churches. Now, what I want to, I want to point out is that these seven churches actually existed at that time. They are not seven church ages that are going to come. And so some people will say, oh, each of these you know, the seven churches represents a church age, and we are now in the Laodicean church age, the last church age and all that. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, write the things which are. Write it to the seven churches which are in Asia. Send it to them. That means those churches were there. So... We shouldn't take the seven churches to represent seven church ages. That's not it. They were literal churches existing that time. But we can learn from all of the seven churches. We can learn, you know, what Jesus found wrong with them, uh, what he told them, what he told them to correct. These are things we can learn and apply from all the seven churches, right? We don't have to say we're only in the seventh church and we are in that church age and all of that. We don't have to say that. Okay, so let's go to chapter 4. So in chapter 4, verse 1, could somebody read that, please? First voice which I heard was chapter 3. See, I will show you things which must take place. So, Chapter 4, verse 1 is the transition. That means this is from here onwards, I'm going to tell you about the future. Right? So, chapter 1 is things that you have seen. Chapters 2 and 3 are things which are. That means they, these chapters 2 and 3 were things that happened during John's time. Chapter 4, verse 1 onwards is things which must take place. It's going to happen in the future. Okay, so chapter 4, and cha now next year, again I'm saying next year we'll read everything verse by verse and I'll explain, right? So now I'm just giving you a quick summary of each chapter. In chapter 4 and chapter 5, we are seeing, chapter 4, we are seeing worship taking place in heaven. We are seeing the 24 elders, they're on the, either side of the throne. Worship is happening. They are bowing down. They are casting their crowns. And there are lots and lots of people who are worshipping the Lord. 
Okay. So this is a, few, uh, a view into the future. Is worship happening in heaven right now? Yes. But this is a vision into the future. That means in time to come, these 24 elders will receive their crowns and they will be seated around the throne. And all the saints will stand before the throne and worship. Meaning it's things to come. It's going to happen. Right? Uh, four and five. So in chapter five, while worship is happening, there's a problem. Problem means there's a question. Who can open the scroll? There's a scroll. In the scroll are written all the prophecies that are waiting to be fulfilled. Who can open the scroll? That means the opening of the scroll is symbolic of saying, let these things start to happen. Who's worthy to do that? Can they say, who's worthy? No, it's, it's like... Well, it's like almost nobody's worthy. Then comes the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Then they begin to worship. Oh, um, this is in uh, in uh, Revelation five eight. You, the Lamb, is worthy. Right? The Lamb is worthy, and so Jesus comes. And we know the Lamb of God, uh, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. That's Jesus. He comes. And he takes the scroll and he is ready to open it. Meaning, now these prophecies will start being fulfilled. Okay. But in chapters 4 and 5, what is happening? There is worship in heaven. All the saints are there worshipping God. So what we say is, because he has said this is going to happen, we are saying that chapter 4 and 5 is a picture of heaven after the rapture of the church. The redeemed, everyone has been taken up into heaven and we are standing before the throne and we are worshipping the Father. The elders have received their crowns, that means their rewards. Everyone else is there worshipping. And at that time, after the rapture of the church, the beginning of the last seven years takes place. The scroll is opened. Those prophecies are going to be fulfilled. You understand? Yeah. Go ahead. The Lamb of God will come back. So, like, who will be the person? So, it seems like that time the Lamb of God. Yeah, so he but doesn't mean Jesus is not in heaven. He's already in heaven. He's already there. But what this picture is telling us is at that moment, it's the Lord Jesus who is like the official one who says, let these prophecies begin to be fulfilled. Because, you know, remember Jesus said, only the Father knows the time. So at the right time, Jesus has come for the church. And when the Father gives the okay, it's the Lord Jesus who says, let's let these things begin to be fulfilled. So it, it, the Lord, the Lamb of God, opening up the scroll, coming to open up the scroll uh, and to say, you know, let, this, let these things begin. It's it's symbolic of Jesus saying these it's like Jesus striking the clock, if you want, or the bell for these prophecies to start being fulfilled. He, he is the one who opens the seven seals. That means uh, okay, this is going to happen from now on. So the seven years, what we know is in the and as you go to the book of Revelation, the seven years there'll be seven. Seven, three sets of seven judgment seats, seals, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls. Judgments are coming. And it's only it's Jesus who opens it and says, okay, start. 
So then from chapter 6, verse 1, start. The first seal is opened, first judgment, second judgment, like that it keeps happening. So what we are saying is because the Lord told John, John, this is going to happen. It's things to come. It's in the future. And at some point, the Lamb of God will take the scroll and he will say these prophecies. It's time for these to be fulfilled. And then on earth, these things will begin to happen. Okay, so that's how we understand chapter 4 and 5. Worship is happening. We will read all this and I'll also explain there's a lot of symbolic things uh, which we are not going into. Go ahead. The uh, scroll, uh, angels crying like who is worthy mm -hmm. to open the seal. It's in chapter 5. Mm -hmm. And before that, chapter 2, chapter 4 is where uh, God is being worshipped. Like Jesus yeah, sits on the throne. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, if we see, uh, even now Jesus was in heaven, even now uh, he was being worshipped, is happening. So it's like, I think, I think that, see, part of, part of Revelation 5, when it says, uh, you know, who is going to come and open up the scroll and this whole thing, I, I think the emphasis, so whether this is going to, you know, uh, be literally happening, there's, oh, nobody knows. You know that uh, somebody's going to cry out, or whether it's expressing to us that the time has come, and there is a sense in heaven, uh, a sense of wonder in heaven, saying, "Who is going to come and take this scroll? Because none of the angels, anybody else, is worthy." And there is a sense of awe and wonder, and then Jesus comes and opens the scroll, right? So whether what we're seeing here in Revelation 5 is, more, is, a, is, a, is an expression of that happening as opposed to just literally somebody you know, saying, oh, yeah, oh, we don't know who's going to open. You know? uh, not in the sense of a lack of knowledge, but more in the sense of awe and wonder. You know, so uh, that, I think, is the main thing that's happening in Revelation 5. That means... Who is this great one who's going to open up the scroll? And then Jesus comes forward to take, you know, and say that now the things are going to happen. I think it's more from uh, the awe and wonder of the moment rather than, oh, we don't know, nobody's here. That, you know, not that kind, but more in there's this. This very solemn moment, awesome moment. And into that moment, Jesus steps, you know, showing how uh, he's the one who has complete authority and, you know, uh, to do this. From that, I think that's what it captures for us in Revelation 5. Are these moments that are ever See, remember, everything is being seen in a vision. It's like it's not like this is happening, but he's seeing in a vision. God is showing to John through pictures and visions what is going to happen. So when it says, I see a lamb and a lion, it doesn't mean there's one lamb running in the throne room or <laughs> some lion. It's it's representing, it's a picture. John recognizes this is Jesus. Right? It's not like one lion is coming around the throne room. <laughs> lion of Judah. No. It's Jesus. But 
is seeing it as a lamb that there's a picture of a lamb or a picture of a lion but he it is really it's jesus coming right so there is both the prophetic imagery that he's saying remember it's all a vision it's not like literally happening it's a vision and in the vision he's seeing this but what does it mean it means the lord jesus is doing this he's coming and taking the scroll and opening but it's being conveyed to john through the prophetic images so john is able to interpret this immediately in his mind because he understands who the lamb of god is who the lion of the tribe of judah is so when he says i see seven spirits and seven eyes and seven you know uh, it, it's talking about the omniscience and the omnipotence and the omnipresence of jesus uh you know so there are some things that we have to understand is literal and there are some things that we have to understand as uh, prophetic images which have meaning especially to the one who was being spoken to which is john so he understands that right those images but he also must keep in mind and as we go forward in in the book of revelation that if the lord is going to speak to john about things that are going to happen 2000 years in plus into the future how will he communicate those things to john and what will those things look like to john so imagine 2000 years ago if somebody saw an airplane what will they think a bird is flying or <laughs> something they won't know it's airplane they'll write down as a big word with a big nose made a lot of noise <laughs> that's what he'll write i saw a bird in a long nose and two wings in the front and two wings at the back and a long tail that went up <laughs> that's how he will write he won't know it's an aeroplane because god is showing him about things into the future but to somebody who has no context so you will see in some of the passages in revelation right he sees and he writes he describes something so i see very strange things some things are flying and um, there is smoke uh, like yellow sulfur and red color smoke is coming so for us today we could say maybe that's a big bomb that is dropped and he's seeing all this happening right but for him they didn't have a bombs in those days and no no context so he'll only write i saw big smoke and i saw this color this color this color and literally is written there so god is showing things way out in the future what john is writing for which john has no context so he'll just record what he says plus there are some things john understands meaning pictures like the lion or the lamb which he understands so he'll say i saw the lamb of god the lion or the tribe of judah those things he understands right but god is using prophetic images okay so chapter 6 so in chapter 6 so from chapter 6 till 19 end of 19 it is all things that are taking place in those seven years in those seven years so chapter 6 to chapter 19 it looks like yeah so many chapters but it is taking place in a period of seven years and the middle of this is chapter 11 verse 1 so if you see if you go with me chapter 11 verse 1 uh let us was is 1 and 2 it says then i was given a reed like a measuring rod and the angel stood saying rise and measure the temple of god the altar and those who worship there but leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it for it has been given to the gentiles and they will tread the holy city under foot for 42 months right 42 months or Uh, verse three, and I will give power to my two witnesses. They will prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days, forty-two months, or three and a half years. So, chapter eleven is the middle of these seven years. 
so very clear okay chapter 6 verse 1 starts the uh, is showing us what is happening on earth at the beginning of the tribulation chapter 11 verse 1 is from there on it is talking about the second half of the tribulation till end of chapter 10 first half so easy to mark it because he says correctly there chapter 11 verse 1 i'm telling you what is going to happen in the 42 months which is three and a half years so that means okay he's from now on is three and a half years that means three and a half years over so chapter 11 verse 1 is middle of the tribulation got it so uh, it's, it's easy for us to understand. Oh, from chapter 6 to chapter end of chapter 10 is the first half of the tribulation. Chapter 11 to chapter 19 is second half of the tribulation. So what happens in the... Uh, any questions from online class? Everyone's following? Any questions? Okay, so what do we see in chapter 6? Chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. There is the opening of the very first seal. So we said there are three sets of judgments. Seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. The seven bowls are the most terrible. That is, that is like uh, a set of very, very terrible judgments. So we begin with the seven seals. When the first seal is open, we see the Antichrist coming. So how do you know he's Antichrist? Read it. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, that's the first seal, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a loud voice like thunder, come and see. And I looked and behold a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. So you're seeing somebody coming, riding on a white horse. Now here again, remember, the horse, horses in the, these four seals, first four seals, you see horses. Horses are symbolic of speed and strength. So don't imagine Antichrist will come riding on a horse. Not literal. Okay. This is again being used symbolic, meaning it's prophetic images. And this man coming riding on a white horse, he has a bow, which is talking about his military strength. He has a crown. He goes about conquering and to conquer. That means authority is being given to him. Dominion is being given to him. So this man riding on a white horse, anything all right network connection huh all right okay so daniel yeah so this is in connection this kind of is parallel to what we read in daniel 11 where um for the Antichrist, he, he has authority over many countries. So he comes riding on a white horse. Now, why are we saying he's the Antichrist? Because the Lord Jesus comes also riding on a white horse. That is in Revelation 19. He also comes riding on a white horse. But he comes as King of Kings, Lord of Lords. This, hmm? yeah, that's what's figured. Meaning, I don't think you'll see Jesus come on, come on, a white horse. Come on, come on. You know, I, I, you know, yeah, it's a picture. It's talking about him coming with strength and glory. But remember Acts 1, what the angel said, you will see him come as he went. Did he go on a white horse? No. Acts chapter 1. Remember the angel told him, told the, all the uh, disciples, the same Jesus that you saw him go will come in like manner as you have seen him go 
Acts chapter 1, verse number 11. Correct? He will come in like manner as you saw him go into. Well, Jesus in his second coming is going to come and land exactly on Mount Olives. Zechariah chapter 14. So where were they? They were on Acts 11, Acts 1 11. They were on Mount Olives. He took off from there. He ascended from there. I shouldn't say he took off. <laughs> he ascended from there. And the angel saying he will come exactly like that. Zechariah 14 says he will come and land on Mount Olives. Okay, so Acts 1.11 is referring to that coming, the second coming, when he'll come back on all, all of us. But as in the secret coming, he's not landing anywhere. He's in the clouds. He will not come to the ground. Yeah, so Revelation 19, it says, you know, the, he comes and all of us riding on horses and all. Uh, I feel that it, it's going to happen so fast. Horse or no horse will come so fast, <laughs> you know. I think it's a picture because when Enoch saw it, he says, I saw the Lord coming with thousands and ten thousands of his saints. That time he said he didn't see any horses or anything. Okay. He said, I saw the Lord is coming, thousands and ten thousands of his saints. All right. So, but what we say, what I want to say in Revelation 6 1 is it is a contrast, right? This man is coming on a horse, but he's not the real Christ. Is the Antichrist. The real Christ is depicted in Revelation 19 coming on a white horse with a sword out of his mouth. Doesn't mean literally there'll be sword. You know, it's, it's, it's prophetic images, right? He's speaking his word. His word is so powerful, right? Uh, and so on. So, Revelation 6 1 starts with the Antichrist coming on the scene. And remember, when he comes, he comes as a man of peace. White horse, Thomas the man of peace. He sets up a covenant of peace for seven years. Daniel 9, 27. Covenant of peace for seven years. But we know in the middle of the seven years, he will break it. But he sets it up first as a covenant of peace. And then immediately we are seeing one after seal after the other. The second seal. And we're not going to read this now, but we will, you know, we'll do this next year. But just know of you. There's conflict. There's, uh, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of war on Earth when the second seal is opened. Uh, uh, a great sword. Uh, third seal, Revelation six verse five. There is famine on the Earth. Food. It's it's it's, it's depicting famine. Uh, fourth seal, Revelation six and verse seven. Uh, it's there is death. Death all over the Earth. Uh, and then with uh, uh, fifth seal, you see that there are a lot of people are being martyred. Uh, it says, Revelation 6, 9, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony they held. So will people become believers in the tribulation? Yes. Why? How can you say that? Because look, it says here, that many people are being killed for the word of God and for the testimony they help. That means people are going to believe suddenly, but they're going to die. They're going to be martyred. So he's saying, I see so many people uh, are being killed, right? And they're coming up to heaven. They're giving, being given white robes. They should rest a little longer, um, and uh, they are being killed. Lots of people are being killed. Revelation 6, 9 to 11. Right? So that is the fifth seal, saying that so many people are martyrs. Verse 12 onwards, Revelation 6, verse 12. Sixth seal. And there are lots of uh, um, disturbances in the, uh, in the heavenly bodies. And this is the fulfillment of what Joel said. Joel said, you know, I will pour out my spirit in the last days and I will show signs in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. 
So what signs are happening? It says the moon, uh, this is in Revelation 6, 12. There's a great earthquake. The sun became black. The moon became like blood. The stars of heaven fell to the earth as fig tree drops its late figs. And people were crying out, telling the mountains, and they, they, um, they're crying to the mountains, fall on us. And they uh, want to hide from the day of wrath. Okay. Now remember, in First Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul said, he will keep us from the day of, he'll keep us from the wrath to come. What is it? It's talking about here. For great is the day of his wrath. For the, for the great day of his wrath has come. He'll keep us from this day. So we won't be there. Okay. But this is also fulfillment of uh, Joel prophesying. The sun being turned into black, the moon in blood red, and uh, all those things. So it's happening now in the tribulation. Yes, Francis. Uh, this is regarding Holy Communion. So when the people get saved on the tribulation time, so Holy Communion will they will have like they'll participate on. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think everything will be there. So imagine, actually, they'll maybe more believe more strong than us, right? At that time. So just imagine after rapture happens. Today they hear us and they are, oh, what are these people talking? They make fun of us. What are these people? Oh, the Bible and uh, but we are we are we are preaching, we are we are, we are you know, so many Bibles are being printed, lots of things of that. Then suddenly rapture happens, we are taken out. These people are going to believe. They'll they'll start reading the Bible, full thing, they'll download the apps, everything, whatever. They'll watch every video, they, you know, all these things we are leaving behind. So they're going to be very strong. They'll get together for prayer. We'll see in chapter 8, there's a lot of prayer happening. A lot of prayer. So big prayer movement happening on earth. Prayer coming up before God. People are going to pray. They're going to seek God. But no hope. Because they're in the tribulation. And what will happen is many, many lives will... We read many times. We are reading in chapter 6. I will read again chapter 12 and also... Uh, other places that uh, chapter 7 also many souls will be killed many will be killed chapter 14 one of the angels are saying don't receive the mark it is better to be killed than receive the mark of the beast so you die it's okay but don't receive the mark of the beast that is the condition okay so let us take a break I'll come back. Thank you.